What's up guys? It's Carlos from Daily Carry Solutions with episode four of hashtag darn close shave. Today's pocket dump is the uh, Best Tech Penguin in uh, black and blue G10 with D2 tool steel. And today's flashlight of the shave is the Olight S1 Baton. I believe it might still be available. I'm hoping they come out with a new one because it's a really badass little light. Um, but in particular, this is going to be a sterling shave. I went ahead and I picked up everything from the toner uh, to the balm and uh, the aftershave. Uh, but in particular, I picked up this particular soap from Sterling and uh, Sterling Soap Company. That's Deep Blue Sea. It is an homage to uh, a fragrance that I am very familiar about. My dad actually introduced this one to me. This is uh, Blue de Chanel. And a uh, nice little story to that. Uh, this is going to be an homage to my dad who was a man of the sea and uh, a man who loved his fragrances. Hence the reason why I picked up Sterling's Deep Blue Sea, which happened to be you guessed it, an homage to Blue de Chanel. So stay tuned. We'll uh, talk a little bit about the shave and we'll talk a little bit about my dad who has his birthday come up February 20th. So may he rest in peace and uh, let's get ready for a dark good shave. <laughs> stay tuned. guys welcome back now uh, like i said this is episode four of hashtag dark clothes shave here on daily carry solutions and uh today's uh pocket dump it's the uh the olight s1 baton this is the i guess the s mini uh great flashlight it even has um this kind of lockout feature so when you press and hold down the button what ends up happening is it does not turn on and what you have to do is kind of hold down the button and then it turns back on a bunch of different modes nice deep carry clip i lost this in the snow this past winter i found it in the spring after my uh landscaper was cutting the grass and uh, he actually hit it i took it out the lens was perfect everything was perfect i i checked the light it turned right on and it's i mean it's been in my pocket ever since great great story from olight and that's the olight s mini now uh, the knife i'm using today is uh from uh Best Tech Knives, and that is the Best Tech Penguin. I'm going to be doing an, uh, a, an in-depth review on this particular knife. This is a nice full-size knife with uh, D2 semi-stainless steel. It's a great um, tool steel, and as tool steels are known for by their name, they are meant to be really used, hold up a great edge, very, very sharp knife. Just drop it a little bit and it's good to go. Nice deep carry clip with the black and blue G10 handles. Very, very awesome uh, knife that I wanted to use for today. It's something that I think that my dad with much larger hands than mine uh, would have found very comfortable. So if you have large hands or large size hands and you want a nice budget knife, that's a great, great knife to use. So uh, onto the shave, we have uh, Sterling on deck. Today is uh, the Scent Du Jour. Deep Blue Sea. Now, this particular fragrance is an homage to Blue de Chanel. Um, this is actually my father's, uh, this is his uh, cologne bottle, actually. This is the one that I, I got from the house. This is one of the things that I took with me when uh, he passed. Uh, this is the large, the 100 milliliter, uh, 3.4 ounce uh, bottle, and it's almost empty. Uh, you can't you probably can't see it from there, but um, before I left, uh, or I lived before in, in Florida to Georgia, um, my dad told me that he wanted me smelling good while I was up here, and uh, he picked me up. Uh, he picked up a smaller bottle for me, one that I actually still have today. So as you can see, this is the smaller bottles, the 1.7, and then this is a 3.4. I still actually uh, keep both. So. Um, <clears throat> Now, on deck, Sterling Soap, great soap, by the way. i uh, cut off a little piece here, and uh, I've already, you know, picked up the lather. Um, I have the uh, toner from Sterling. This is the Witch Hazel Unscented uh, with Menthol and uh, Aloe Vera. This is an awesome toner. Uh, the aftershave is Deep Blue Sea as well. Let's see if I can go ahead and put that there. 
And then the balm is the unscented post shave balm. Uh, being that it's cold and, and it's been damp, it's, it just feels really cold and it ends up drying on my face, especially because of the fact that I use a, a CPAP. So having something to be able to give me some extra moisture uh, really helps. So the, um, the sun making required brush. I actually picked up a brush handle from uh, Philips recent drop. This is brush handle number 208 from Sun Making Required, and this is the way it looks. Hopefully I'll be able to get little nuances about it. It has a nice look, kind of like the sea. Uh, nice aqua and blue. Um, I got it because obviously I was thinking of my dad at the time. It was a great brush. I was actually gonna see if maybe uh, Chisel and Hound or Grizzly Bay were gonna be doing something and I ended up picking up that one instead. Um, <clears throat> I have a couple of knots that I, I purchased, uh, some synthetics that I wanted to go ahead and, you know, check with the, the, uh, the brush uh, handle to see if maybe they'd make a good pairing. And so far it's been this one right here. It's a silk smoke knot, uh, 26 millimeter from uh, AP Shape Co. I might actually set this. I'm probably gonna do a video on that too. So uh, just keep that in mind. And uh, aside from that, one thing that is in my pocket that um, I didn't really talk about is uh, my, uh, my Pez dispenser right here. Uh, this is a Bob Ross Pez dispenser. A lot of people don't know this, but my mother actually collects Pez. Um, but besides the fact uh, this one actually has a, uh, a likeness of my dad. Um, my dad was a burly guy. He had that, you know, curly hair and he had the, the same, uh, you know, beard. So it's a nice little homage that I keep near me, you know, that I use every now and again. And uh, fun fact, uh, Pez, when they first came out, um, these are the, the ones that you fill up the candy in here and then you kind of just open it up and, you know, little Pez uh, candy gets dispensed from there. They were actually headless, so they had like just a little thing here that you kind of opened and then uh, mints actually came out. The first Pez uh, flavor was mint because they were meant to be uh, uh, after smoke mints. So after your cigarette, after your cigar, something like that, boom, uh, people would go ahead and pop one in their mouth and it was good to go. You had like a, what's literally like a magazine. You would take the wrap on wrap and just kind of put them all in here, close it, and then you'd be able to just take them out as you felt and just put this in your pocket since it didn't have the head. They came out with the heads afterwards, but the rest is history. <laughs> Made them collectible and my mom collects them. So uh, now I am post shower. The soap is already lathered up in my uh, lather bowl and I'm using a 24 millimeter tuxedo knot on this uh, Kevy Shaves DS Cosmetic brush that you may have seen from another video. Nice thick lather that I got from just a small sliver of the soap and uh, lather it up now. Ah, so um, <clears throat> uh, for those who are watching this in an area where children will pre be present, I will warn you this is not going to be a, uh, a nice, uh, you know, a, a rated E for everyone kind of video. There are going to be some adult topics that will be discussed. It's all in good humor and just, you know, in remembrance of memories that I've had growing up and uh, hanging out with my dad. So if you've got children, I would say put on your headphones if you're watching this from your phone or a tablet, even your computer, or kindly ask those uh, who would not want to hear some uh, adult content to leave the room. So, before I get to that, I'll say a quick little story about my old man and his passing. He passed in November of 2016, um, born February 20th, 1959. Uh, this year he would have been 62. So, that guy, he was, he was the man. You know, he was the, he was a great father, great father figure, taught me a lot of uh, lessons during his life here on God's green earth and taught me a lot of lessons after his passing. Luckily, you know, I was somebody who really appreciated the time that he had here on his earth, on, on God's earth, and... Uh, he was somebody who really invested in my upbringing. And uh, during his viewing, I actually played a, uh, a video 
it was basically just you know a, a huge um it was about seven or eight minutes on loop that i played at his viewing uh just a a collage of different pictures a slideshow of um all of these different photos that he had with friends and family and just of himself throughout his life and it turned what was originally going to be a somber mood and uh, starting the first uh, pass here what took a somber mood into a celebration of his life and that's what I meant for it to be I hated when you go to these um, these funeral parlors for these services and everybody's dressed in black everybody's you know just kind of tentative to want to talk to each other they're kind of just all in their you know their corners huddled up as families some people know some people but some people don't you know everybody's in a messed up mood so I did two things while I was there number one um, I requested to be the first to see him when uh, I got there because I was coming from out of state and I was actually one of the last to figure out that he had passed. So I said, okay, if I was the last to find out he passed, I'd like to be the first to see him before the viewing. Little did they know the reason why I did that is because when they presented my father, you know, open casket, he died of uh, fairly natural causes, just heart related issues. Um, <clears throat> what I ended up doing was going up to his, you know, his body in the coffin and I took some cologne and I sprayed it on him. Now, the cologne that I used was not Blue Le Chanel. It was Le Mal from Jean-Paul Gaultier. He had been the one that really showed me what a good fragrance can do from a very early age. You know, when I was young, my mom used to give me the stuff like, you know, Tommy Cologne and CK1. CK1 I still kind of use every now and then. It's a nice little fresh smell. But my dad, he was into great, great smelling stuff. And while he wasn't using, you know, Parfums de Marley or, you know, Maison Marchiel or, you know, uh, anything like that. He did have some good quality colognes and, and actually some perfumes and one of them was the Mao that I used from a very very young age in, in my teenage days and the girls used to love getting close to me especially you know since I was on the basketball team and during game days I would have to wear suits at my school so I put it on under my suit and just a little bit would last me all day and the girls I mean she fucking love that shit so <clears throat> they um when they took him to the funeral parlor, dressed him up, did all that. He did mention that if he ever passed, he wanted to be comfortable and he wanted to go in his uh, his Nike shoes. So they gave him his Nike sneakers <laughs> and they gave him a nice suit that he had there. You know, nice shirt, nice tie. Uh, I picked out the tie. So that's how I know it was nice. But uh, aside from that, they had forgotten to, you know, put some cologne on him. And the truth is, I was really big on cologne and so was my dad. That's who I learned it from. And I didn't have anything that I knew off the top of my head that I could take over there, you know, uh, discreetly and put on. But I used to always travel with different scents, you know, the little uh, sample scents and stuff that you get from... Uh, you know, if you went to Macy's and stuff like that, they came in slightly smaller bottles. Let's say the five milliliter or even the two milliliter samples, kind of like this uh, sample of a uh, fine American blend aftershave, but it was filled with different things. And I had one that was of uh, Le Mal from Jean Paul Gaultier. I didn't tell anyone, but I happened to have it with me when I went to, uh, to you know, South Florida to see my dad. Didn't even think of 
why I had put it, but I realized everything has a reason. And I guess the man upstairs did that on purpose. So I went to his, uh, I went to his, you know, his body. Got real close because I was the first one to see him before anybody else, uh, you know, said my piece. Opened up his uh, jacket, you know, unbuttoned his jacket. And put a spray or two in the inside of his jacket. Because the truth is, with uh, Lemao, it's one of those that you don't exactly spray on everywhere. You just put a little bit. If people get close to you, they will definitely smell it. And that was a signature scent of his. You would know if you saw him. Uh, he was either smelling like Le Mal or blue, uh, the Chanel. So put that on. And I also had a slideshow of, you know, pictures and stuff that was playing on a TV near his, his body, you know, in the casket. My mother came in, my uncles, oh, I'm sorry, my uncle, my aunts on both sides, my mom and my dad's side came in. They were the first ones to come in when the whole uh, session, I guess, uh, began. And they uh, got close to them, said their piece. And, uh, you know, they're going to pay their respects and we're going to give them a kiss. And they stopped for a moment. I stayed by the, by the coffin because I wanted to see their reaction. They stopped for a moment and they smelled him. They looked back at me. Every single one. And their eyes welled up. They started, you know, to really hold back from crying. Not because they were sad that my dad had passed. I mean, yeah, it was a somber moment, you know. It, was, it really sucked. But it brought back that one final thought of him, you know. It's like, wow, you know, even in death, he smells good, you know. And he was going to go. He's going to go smelling good and looking good. And uh, I wanted to make sure that that, you know, that I honored my father that one last time. By doing that for him, you know, and uh, they thanked me for that, you know, and there were even other people that when they, they smelled him, they're like, oh, my God, you know, uh, Big Carlos, <laughs> because he had the same name as I, you know, oh, man, he smelled great. I remember when he, you know, he first picked up that cologne and that was the reason why I picked it up and I got into fragrances, too. So, you know, it was nice to hear that. And then, you know, when um, we had people coming by checking out the videos and stuff like that. It took what was going to be a uh, sorrowful viewing, you know, on a low note to, uh, to a nice celebration of his life where people were talking about the crazy shit that they did with my old man <laughs> during his life and times on this earth and saying hello to me, people from all over the globe, man. I'm talking about different states, different countries, even this guy from Kuwait. Dominican Republic, Colombia, you know, uh, all over. People that, you know, whose lives had been touched by him, you know, uh, and I love that, you know, I, I, I really wanted that to happen, uh, and he would have wanted that too, I know him, so, you know, that's just one story, but <clears throat> and now on to the, the more adult story, um, when I was young, and I'm talking about you know, 15 plus years ago, you know, we all had our crazy days, and I was a DJ that actually, you know, played at clubs, and without getting into the whole crazy club life, you know, I wasn't a big pill guy, and I wasn't, I never touched any really hard drugs, but I did smoke a little pot here and there, and uh, one thing I did used to do, actually, was I used to make bud butter, I used to take, you know, the weed and kind of melt it into butter and use it for... You know, making cookies and stuff like that. My dad loved cookies. And, you know, uh, he had a saying that in Spanish that, you know, in the house, uh, food has no name, you know, in this house. En la casa, tú sabes, la comida no tiene nombre. And <laughs> so if you had something out and he wanted to sample it, he was going to do it. And that was the way it was going to work. He worked damn hard. And he's like, you know what, if I'm going to come home and try something that's on your plate, I believe I've earned it. So 
One day I went to my friend Jessica's house and she was just a friend. There was nobody I was hooking up with or anything. Uh, and I made some uh, oatmeal cookies with this special butter. I used a crap ton of really good weed that a friend of mine, this female uh, seller, this dealer, I guess you could say, hooked me up with. This is a Colombian chick that I knew. Really, really nice people. And uh, so I made a bunch of oatmeal cookies at uh, my friend Jessica's house. Because, you know, I could take one of those and get a nice bake on, throw on some records, record a mix. My parents wouldn't be too aware of it, you know. Just kind of chill in my room. Didn't smell like anything. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll do that. So I made probably two dozen cookies. I mean, with all the, the butter we had, but I took a dozen home and I left a dozen, kind of like as payment, <laughs> as a thank you to my friend, Jessica. She won't see this video, so I don't mind dropping her name. Anyhow, I had the bag out. I had taken, probably eaten two, and I started mixing uh, down, meaning I was finalizing the sounds and stuff, you know, normalizing the sounds from a mix that I had done. And I was on my laptop in my room, I had my headphones on, I was listening to it, trying to figure out what was too high, what was too low, so that I can go ahead and save it and start burning CDs of my mixtape, so I can give them out next time. I was at the, uh, at a show and stuff like that. So he walks in. I'm high as a kite. I'm <laughs> listening to stuff. He's like, hey, I'm going to the keys. Uh, want anything? I turn around. I'm good. Nah, I'm good. And uh, so he was about to leave. And then, you know, he stops me. And he saw in a plastic bag, I had some cookies. You know, I had about 10 there. So, I'd eat, you know, eating two. And he kind of looked at me. My head was turned. But I am a black belt inside eye. Peripherals of like, you know. And I saw he reached for the bag. And he scarfed down like two quick cookies. Told me he was heading to the Keys to go pick up a check for a job that he had done. And he'd be back. Put on my headphones. All right, take it easy. Kept doing what I had to do. Saved my file. I started burning a CD. <laughs> And maybe, I don't know, 25 minutes later, I get a call on my cell phone. <laughs> I picked up because I saw the number. Caller ID was my dad. I picked up, hey, Pa, what's up? First words that came out of his mouth. You motherfucker. <laughs> you motherfucker. I am high as a kite right now. I had to stop on the way back from picking up this goddamn check. You know, at uh, Burger King, he had to go to the Keys to go pick up some money. <laughs> he got off of the car and he was high as shit. He didn't want the guy to think that he was, you know, half asleep or high as hell. So he left his glasses on to pick up the check. He got the hell out of there. Talked as little as he could. <laughs> he didn't even know what the guy told him. <laughs> It hit him hard as hell by the time he got here. So on the on the way back, he went to uh to Burger King, grabbed the Whopper meal, and he and he uh he choked down a, a fucking burger and uh, his soda to try and kill the high as quick as possible. <laughs> but he called me up. It was the funniest thing ever, you know, because he's like. You motherfucker. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me this shit was... I knew something was up that you had cookies that you had brought it back from a friend's house. I go, oh, well, you know, next time you'll ask whose stuff that is before just eating it. And he goes, man, you got any more of that shit? <laughs> oh, man. And ironically, you know, then we had a little talk about, the, you know, me doing that and... I told him, you know, because I have Crohn's disease and 
It was actually something that would help me relax a little bit. You know, de-stress. And, you know, stomach problems are aggravated by stress. And when you have an issue like Crohn's disease, you'd be surprised what stress will do to you, you know? And so I, uh, I, I, you know, I did that every now and again. I've since stopped. But during that time, that was a big thing that a lot of people didn't know that I was doing. And those who knew, you know, they kept it a secret because I wasn't one of those uh, decrepits in society. I was a decent, hardworking guy. Didn't bother nobody. Did my thing. Wasn't anything over the you know, very, like, overly obvious. Always smelled good. I was in your average, you know, pothead. So, a lot of people just, you know, stay quiet about it. And if they did know, either I told them or they found out on their own accord and they never really told me much about it. So, <laughs> that was my thing. And uh, my old man had to talk with me. You know, he did some crazy shit when he was younger and... You know, he used to smoke pot too. That was a big thing in his generation. So he thought it was funny that, you know, I kind of I kind of was doing that. And he asked me, you know, where the hell I got the shit because it was really good. And well, he asked me for a couple of cookies and stuff so he could take it home to a friend. Well, take it to the office for a friend and, you know, that sort of thing. It was funny as hell. Good times. <laughs> so I thought I would share that. On the, uh, the eve of his 62nd birthday. Because the truth is, my old man and I were like best buds, you know. He was my par. That's what I used to call him. I used to call him par. Or some, you know, derivative of that. So it's like par, parsley, parsley, potatoes, you know, parsnips. And he used to call me par as well. And it stood for... I got a little nick there from a bump. Um, <clears throat> it stood for partner in crime. So... That's actually where it came from. Uh, I held him in very high regards, and everybody knew that they, you know, they knew that he loved me very much, and they knew that I loved him very much. So uh, I thought that it was only fair that I do something like this for him, considering, you know, he uh, he was always into fine fragrances, and if he would have found out I was uh, doing this kind of thing, he was a cartridge guy, but he'd have totally gotten into it too. And, He'd have probably got really badass razors. Would have probably sent me one. We would have probably been talking fragrances, you know. Uh, colognes, eau de parfums, EDPs and EDTs, which are separated by the content fragrance, the percentage of fragrance, if I recall correctly. And uh, he would have liked that I was doing this, you know. Aside from the fact that I'm doing the channel. He would have liked that I was doing this on the channel. Because he was one of the reasons why I really got into EDC. He was a mechanic. And he always had his shit at the ready. When somebody needed something taken care of, he was the one that, he, that they called. I mean, he was, a, he was a great mechanic. And, uh... He was a hard worker, and I'd like to hope that some of that rubbed off on me in my uh, in my pursuit of, you know, identity. But I will say I've always worked very hard at everything that I do. And one of the last things that my dad and I spoke of, in fact, the night before he passed, I called him, talked to him. He told me he had had a busy week and asked how my day was going. And I told him what was going on at my job. And I think I had just gotten a promotion. Or I was told I was getting a promotion that was going to be announced during a Christmas party. And he's like, man, I hate the fact that you moved, but I understand why. And I want you to know that I'm really proud of you. Now. When you have somebody in your life that you look up to you, that you look up to, say that they are proud of you, 
especially somebody like my old man, that shit wrapped me up with warmth like a warm blanket. That shit was, you know, I could have conquered the world with that kind of, you know, uh, confidence I had. That my old man told me he was proud of me. You know, he told me he loved me and he was just, you know, he was a great guy. So I miss him a lot and that's the reason why I did this video. Aside from the fact, you know, I wanted to shave. Which, speaking of which, we're going to get into the uh, pro shave now. I'm going to go ahead and clean all this stuff off and we're going to get into that uh, shortly. All right, guys. So, uh, shave number four is in the books. Oh, man. Great, great smooth shave with the Rockwell 6S. I also get that with the 6C, and I'll be using that in a later video. But for 100 bucks, and even for 50 bucks for the uh, 6C, uh, you probably will not find a better uh, adjustable razor, which allows you to be able to set the scales to the aggressiveness uh, that you want. In this case, this is... Um, uh, plate number five and that's what I used but you can go anywhere from plates one through six and uh, big shout out to, to Sterling man Sterling makes some really really good products I mean look I still had enough lather you know not only with my uh, my brush but you can see the bowl I could have easily done a head shave I probably had a little bit more to, to touch up a good another three passes easy 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 so um, <clears throat> now we're going to start with the uh, the mentholated unscented toner which I like to go ahead and throw on before you have to shave kind of get that excess soap kind of clean the skin one last time get all those pores nice and clean ready feel that cool cool feeling of the menthol before throwing on the aftershave splash Sterling is a company I mean you get really good value out of their products, and uh, this is no exception. I mean, this uh, this mentholated uh, witch hazel and aloe. Oh, you feel that menthol, that coolness of the menthol. This is great for summer too, by the way. I just happened to use it today, and uh, man, the, the amount of soap that you get with just a small sliver of you know that sample puck, which you can get this for. I think it's less than five bucks. You can pick this up, and this will cover you if you are a frugal shaver. That is. Got to be number one on your list. I mean, just the best um, combination of slickness, cushion, you know, and just all of the products from uh, Sterling. Just fantastic. You're probably, it's going to be hard for you to be able to compete against something like that. So um, now what I'm going to use, now that I've thrown that on and it's uh, nice and dry, is oh, a couple of nicks here. I got a couple of things here and there because uh, it's probably because of the fact that, you know, I've been playing with my dog and my dog's been licking my face on there and it's probably why I broke out there. Don't really have much on this side, but uh, I'm gonna be using the uh, the aftershave. I just got a sample of both, to try it out. Definitely, definitely gonna be buying the, uh, the soap and the aftershave splash together. Great, great scent. Great pro quality products. Let's go ahead and see how the uh, aftershave feels. Rub it in a little bit and let it dry off for a moment. Onto the face. Mm. No sting at all. Get that skin food on there. It feels nice. Oh man. It's amazing what these shave companies do with their aftershaves. You know, you have PAA with theirs, Noble Otter. Zingari Man has the recovery splash. I don't really do aftershave splashes with alcohol. This does have alcohol. And so does PAA and Noble Otter. But some don't. Personally, I like the alcohol now. Because it gives just a little bit of sting in areas where you felt that, okay, that needed... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in again with this shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, little areas that could have used some... Uh, Sterilization, I guess you can say. Ah, you can smell that fragrance, that <clears throat> that blue the Chanel. Very nice. And it's, you know, the, the soap is, is fragrant without being too overbearing. You have the, uh, just a little bit there. Just putting a little bit on the center of the palm of my hand. 
So you have a scent from the soap, not being too overbearing, but being, you know, present even when it's lathered. And you have the aftershave that really shows off the scent. And then just enough to give you that scent while you've applied the, you know, the ball and it still stays on you. And because of the fact that it's an homage to a fragrance, it goes away. The fragrance stays. So, nice way to keep that scent on you, on your face. Kind of reminds you of that, you know, that cologne. And the good thing about it is if you see a quality shaved product with a fragrance that you maybe don't know and want to buy, it's a very safe thing to do to get uh, fragrance-based homages like this one. Um, you can go to Sephora, you can go to, uh, you can go to Macy's, Nordstrom, any of the big, uh, you know, retail stores that have a, uh, a perfume or cologne section, ask to smell the actual uh, cologne or perfume and if it's something that you like then you know it's going to be something that is going to be a dead ringer for that i mean if it really is an homage to it so um <clears throat> now that said i'm going to go ahead and throw on some uh, louis chanel go ahead and it's uh, right there and right there i'm dousing a little bit too much because i'm wearing it to bed and i'm going to smell good I feel like my old man <sighs> love you pop <laughs> and obviously, this is the, the Bob Ross Pez, but uh, it does remind me a lot of my old man. Uh, I'll go ahead and put a link to it if you want to go ahead and check that out. And uh, yeah, that's basically it, guys. Like I said before, the Pocket Dump is the, uh, the Best Tech Penguin right here. I'm going to do a review on that one coming up soon. And the Olight uh, S1 Baton is an oldie but a goodie from Olight. If you have the opportunity to go ahead and check out this particular light and uh, buy it. It's a definite buy. It's great EDC, very durable. And uh, that's about it, man. Shout out to Sterling uh, Soap Company and uh, Rockwell Razors with the Great Shave on Plate 5, Gillette Nasset Blade on its first use, and possibly my first uh, artisan brush and uh, not that I uh, put together myself. So a uh, huge fan of that. This has been a, a deep, a darn close shave with a deep blue sea. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you all next time. Take care guys, peace.